Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, March 5th, 2015. Here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight, Israel reportedly seizes Iranian weapons hours after Netanyahu's congressional speech and how the mark of the beast is closer than ever. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Emissaries, ringwraiths, generals, field marshals of Satan manifesting their planetary wickedness on a giant scale, opening the hell gates, preparing to be given their one hour upon the earth. Less than 24 hours after Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu gave his speech to Congress, warning us all of the dangers posed by Iran, the Israeli Navy, they say they have captured a shipment of rockets in the Red Sea. Supposedly, it was en route to Gaza and coming from Iran. IDF spokesman Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner said the ship was flying under the Panama flag. Now, that is the true definition of a false flag right there. And it contained a shipment of Syrian M302 rockets. The Israeli military estimates that Hamas has amassed an arsenal of some 10,000 rockets since Israel withdrew from Gaza in 2005. The newest addition to Hamas's rocket arsenal is the Syrian-made M302 with a range of 93 miles. Meanwhile, as Israel increases air raids on what it says are underground tunnel networks, rocket sites, and militant leaders, the health ministry in Gaza reports that at least 101 Gazans have been killed, including numerous civilians. Now, even though they captured this shipment of rockets, they obviously didn't get them all, all right? I mean, Hamas could still launch rockets from the Gaza Strip into Tel Aviv and even Jerusalem. And according to the Israeli Navy, Iran is the one supplying Hamas with this arsenal. So very dangerous developments indeed. Now, I was just talking about Netanyahu's speech to Congress the other day. He wants a regime change in Iran, and he wants the U.S. to support him. But don't forget, it was Netanyahu back in 2002 who said if we were to take out Saddam Hussein, who U.S. intelligence put in power as a puppet dictator, by the way, if we were to take out Saddam, all would be good and peaceful in Iraq. He said there would be enormous positive reverberations on the region. And of course, this was echoed by the neocons in the U.S. and by the Bush administration. But flash forward to modern day times and what a mess since the capture and execution of Saddam Hussein. There's been death, chaos, tremendous instability in the region, and worst of all, the emergence of ISIS. A top member of the jihadist group that the U.S. government and NATO armed and funded in the overthrow of Colonel Gaddafi back in 2011, is now leading ISIS forces in Libya. Once again, the growth of ISIS can be traced directly back to our government's insane policy of aiding terrorists who went on to join ISIS after the destabilization of the secular governments in Libya and Syria. Abdel Hakim Belhaj, seen here meeting with Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham, was the emir of the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, LIFG, an organization affiliated with Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, which killed US troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. In 2011, I wrote a series of articles pointing out that the US and Britain were directly supporting jihadists like Belhaj in an area in Libya which West Point warned was the world capital for Al-Qaeda suicide bomber recruitment. We were supporting these people to overthrow Gaddafi when Tripoli fell with the aid of British and American cruise missiles. These same terrorists got access to nuclear material, deadly chemicals, and 30,000 shoulder-fired rockets. After being handed power, these same terrorists flew the Al-Qaeda flag over courthouses in Benghazi, the same flag now being flown by ISIS militants. They imposed Sharia law, while transforming Libya from a relatively prosperous and thriving nation into a brutal hellhole run by tribal warlords and jihadists. And our governments helped them do it. Some of these same terrorists were then airlifted into Syria by our allies to join the ranks of jihadist rebels in the effort to topple the Assad government. 
which of course led to the birth of ISIS in the region. And even as the US continues to support so-called moderate rebels in Syria, thousands of them are defecting to the Islamic State. The Citizens Committee on Benghazi report concluded that the United States was involved in, quote, knowingly facilitating the provision of weapons to known Al-Qaeda militias and figures, including Bel Hajj, and that if the US, quote, hadn't been helping to arm Al-Qaeda militias throughout Libya, the attack on the US consulate wouldn't have occurred a year later. The White House armed, funded, militarily aided, and gave political office to the guy now leading ISIS terrorists in Libya. So we keep hearing this line in the media over and over again. How do we stop ISIS? Do we need to send in ground troops? How about this? How about you stop arming and funding fucking bloodthirsty terrorists in the first place? How's that for a novel idea? How about you stop destabilizing secular governments and replacing them with gangs of jihadist lunatics? How about we find out why the hell ISIS keeps receiving these accidental airdrops of weapons caches from British and American planes. ISIS is now threatening to send half a million immigrants from Libya to cause chaos on the streets of Europe. The Islamic State continues to butcher Christians and Muslims across the region. And all because our governments supported these subhuman scumbags from the very beginning. Iraqis have evidence U.S. arms Islamic State terrorist. Do we have that clip ready? Iraqi Prime Minister says he will release documents soon. The head of the Badr organization Iraq told Parliament on Thursday he was has evidence the U.S. is arming the Islamic army, according to a report carried by the Arabic language newspaper. And it goes on from there. The organization was previously known as the Badr Brigades, the military wing of the Iran-based Shia Islamic Party Supreme Council for Islamic Revolution in Iraq. And those are the folks in there now with their artillery defeating ISIS. Iranian media and other sources have claimed on at least two occasions U.S. military aircraft dropped weapons in areas held by Islamic State. The Iraqi intelligence sources reiterated the U.S. military planes have airdropped several aid cargoes for ISIL terrorists to help them uh, resist the siege laid by the Iraqi army, security, and popular forces Iraqi intelligence claimed in December. And then it goes into now the London-based organization Conflict Arrangement Research previously reported that ISIS fighters are using significant quantities of arms, including M-16 rifles, marked property of U.S. government. In June, Aaron Klein, writing for WorldNet Daily, re reported that members of ISIS were trained in 2012 by U.S. instructors working at a secret base in Jordan, according to information from Jordanian officials. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul said last year ISIS was able to capture large areas of Iraq due to arms transfers from moderates, so-called, in Syria fighting a proxy war against the government of Bashar al-Assad. Now, let's just remember here, and again, we have the clip up on Infowars.com with the president, but it's in, uh, of Iraq, but it's in Arabic, so you can go watch it if you want to see that Iraqi news report. The point here is we know this is what's going on. That's right, we know this. We know the United States arms, trains, and funds ISIS. And yet here we are spending billions of U.S. tax dollars on so-called national security. I mean, it makes no sense. And now they are telling us that there are even ISIS sleeper cells right here inside the United States. I mean, how the hell did that happen? Where's all this money going to? Let's cut the bullshit. The war on terror is a total fraud. ISIS is a Frankenstein that was created by the CIA, Mossad, MI6, even the Pakistani ISI, if you want to trace it all the way back to Al Qaeda. If we really want to end terrorism, we should take some good and solid advice from President John F. Kennedy and split the CIA into a thousand pieces. I mean, that would do us all a lot of good. And don't forget, it was also President Dwight Eisenhower during his farewell address to the nation. He warned us all of the rise of the military-industrial complex and 
in my opinion, that was also a warning to John F. Kennedy as well. Now, speaking of arming our enemies, Lord Rothschild is warning investors that we are about to embark on the most dangerous geopolitical time since World War II. Well, he should know, after all, his family funded most every war since the Napoleonic Wars. Lord Jacob Rothschild, whose business associates include weasels like Warren Buffett and Henry Kissinger, well, he blamed the dangerous climate on chaos and extremism in the Middle East, Russian aggression and expansion, and a weakened Europe threatened by horrendous unemployment. So that is a very scary thought coming from this guy. And if you're not familiar with the history of the Rothschild family, I suggest you look into it. I mean, these guys are worth a lot of money. The Rothschild family is worth $500 trillion. And they own nearly every central bank in the world. They've financed both sides of basically every war since Napoleon. The Rothschilds, they own your news, the media, your oil, and your government. Most of you don't even know who this evil bastard is. And I also found out something else very disturbing about Lord Rothschild. He looks like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the resemblance is obvious. The only difference is Mr. Burns is about as harmless as a Boy Scout or Mother Teresa in comparison. What a douche. Smithers, let's start World War III. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break. The InfoWars Nightly News will return right after this. When we come back, we have two very powerful reports, one from Leanne McAdoo, the other from John Bound. And I'm going to sit down and talk to a biblical scholar. We're going to talk about the emergence of implantable microchips. Is the mark of the beast coming up? That's coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent form of oregano oil on the market sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano. Now available in our limited first run at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. So one of the big things that you're probably going to be seeing coming out of South by Southwest is how technology is doing away with those pesky passwords. And of course, biometrics is being hailed as the best, less hackable alternative. But there's just one problem with that. Every single time they roll out a new biometric security measure, it's bypassed with a really easy technique. 
For instance, eye scanning authentication can be skirted by simply printing a high-res photo found in a Google search. Security researcher Jan Starberg Chrysler from the Chaos Computer Club tells Forbes how this kind of attack is possible. The best targets are bright eyes because iris recognition systems work with infrared light. Also, only 75% of a target's iris needs to be visible in photos, and an iris diameter of only 75 pixels is necessary to be printed out with a resolution of 1200 DPI. And believe it or not, this can all be easily attained with readily available printers. Now, Starbuck has already proven how easy a biometric hack can take place. In December, he showed off a clone of a thumbprint of the German defense minister Ursula von der Leyen. And he was able to create this fake print using photos of the politician's hand. Now, unlike a fingerprint attack where it is necessary to create a proper clone, Chrysler claims that all that's needed to hack iris recognition is this printed out photograph. Now you can imagine how easily a brazen hacker could target biometrics considering just how many high-res photos are on the internet. And this technology is already everywhere. Iris scanners are being rolled out just to customize your order at Pizza Hut. Have a nice meal, guys. And forget about being a sophisticated hacker. You just need to be a scorned lover to get past biometrics. So I pulled out my phone and I had several things confirming that he was, you know, stepping How'd you up. How'd that? His got drunk and passed out one night. And uh, I did the little fingerprint on the phone. And you know, I put his hand on what? his phone. So you're a fed. So using your thumbprint to unlock your phone might just be a little bit too convenient for those crazy ex-girlfriends. Now we've shown you just how easily your credit card information can be siphoned off. So in this case, biometrics are better than passwords, but they're not bulletproof. A whole new era of biometric security is being rolled out from your heart rate, your gait, veins, even the way you hold your phone. These are all attributes that are unique to you being researched for identity confirmation. Before rolling out the brave new world of biometrics, researchers need to ensure that they are not creating a false sense of security that's actually leaving us vulnerable to a whole new criminal level of identity theft. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're well, here in a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. One of the things which really interested me there was your, your view about Jimmy Savile and your <laughs> knowledge at the time that it was oh, going on. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think uh, all of us, what we call the peoples, knew what was going on with the BBC. As bad as we now know it was? Yeah, we knew. We all knew. We knew the, you go to Top of the Pops, what you were facing. It, it, it was common knowledge, but it wasn't common knowledge in the media. British entertainer Jimmy Seville victimized young girls on national television, openly flaunted abusing 177 patients between the ages of 5 and 75 at 41 hospitals keeping their eyeballs as souvenirs. Hospitals have rules with patients and things like that. Well, because I'm dyslexic when I want to be, I don't understand rules. Jimmy Savile's victims have faced years of pain. We owe it to them and to our audiences to understand how this could have happened 
and to make sure that everything we do ensures that nothing like this could ever happen again. Now exposed as a hoax, this video just adds clarity to the pile of criminal activity the bought and paid for politicians and media ignore in the interest of national security. As evidence escalates on the cancerous perversion that has festered secretly in the back rooms of the elite. Institutional pedophile rings operating in this country now. Sorry, we're gonna have to leave you. We're gonna have to leave you. Just stand Hoax, you ask, is, uh, there's a bizarre satanic ritual being described by children in a video. Tell us about that. Yeah, this is a chilling video, whether it's a hoax or not. I mean, it, it's gone completely viral over the weekend. It's got over a thousand comments on Reddit. It's got 200,000 views on the original YouTube video. And it's basically two young children describing how they were allegedly sexually abused and forced to partake in bizarre satanic baby sacrifice rituals by all these police head teachers um, and other local officials in an area of London. There are, there are literally 20 videos of these children on the internet describing in detail what they were put through. Recent so, video uh, goes into Wednesday. greater horrifying Wednesday, detail. Wednesday the most busiest day of sex uh, and today it's Wednesday and um, if I was right now in, uh, on Wednesday in school, they would have done lots and lots of sex to me. As the lights come on and the roaches scurry, a wave of propaganda rolls out, protecting the foulest acts, plaguing the innocent, siding with the pedophiles. Deeming it a predisposition, a New York Times columnist says pedophiles are born that way. Does that empathetic logic apply to theft, rape, murder? The American Psychological Association doesn't agree. They published in the 2013 Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders that pedophilic disorder is not a sexual orientation. Meanwhile, loopholes in New York allow pedophiles to live within 1,000 feet of standalone pre-K and kindergarten facilities. In Mississippi, known pedophiles are allowed to get an educator's license due to the prevention of reporting and investigating incidents of pedophilia. And then you get the reports out of the Franklin cover-up of the snuff films, it's just, I just can't handle it. And you need to understand, folks, we're dealing with pure evil here. And basically, when you're in the town right outside the Bohemian Grove there in Monterio, it's like you're in the little town below Dracula's castle but they've all been bitten, or most of them have. When you're in a restaurant, they go, you're Alex Jones. And they go, we don't like you, we're not serving you, get out of here. And we're like, well, our camera's in the car, and I should've just confronted them. I mean, it, it, you go to that town, they work for ca the castle up on the hill, and they know it. And nobody wants to talk about the dead kids, nobody wants to talk about the satanic rituals, nobody wants to talk about it. And then people make jokes about it and go, oh, there's nothing going on there. Well, yeah, during the two weeks, that it officially goes on. Most of the people there aren't devil worshippers or pedophiles, but they get all the actors and directors and the people they're into to come there, and they ship in male prostitutes and top gay porn stars. That's in the news. Watch my films, and they they do you know have gay sex there, and that's just the intro into it though. And then they break off and go to other camps in the area. And so that's the gateway into this whole situation. Finally, new laws, investigations, and harsher penalties are bringing these crimes into the center of our blinded attention. Your children belong to you, not a government run by hell's elite. Four years ago, I asked you, what were you going to do with that institutional people? Come closer. Women? operating in this country now. Your reply to me, Nick, was, I don't know what you mean by institutional paedophile rings. Do you understand what I was talking about four years ago now, Nick, and stay in my eyes? Oh, thank you. Gotcha. John Bound for Infowars.com.
Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. How would you like to have an RFID microchip implanted underneath your skin? Or maybe an electronic tattoo that sticks to your arm or your wrist. Not only does it look badass and trendy, but it's also every bit as useful and complex as your smartphone. Now, I know it sounds like something futuristic or even something out of a science fiction movie, but guess what? The future is now. And not only does this technology already exist, but it's already being developed and implemented at a rapid and accelerated pace. As the technological elite finally begin to bridge the gap between our digital and physical identities. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell, except the one that has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. So how close are we to actually having microchips implanted under our skin? Well, according to the NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams, we might be a lot closer than you think. More now of our special coverage here tonight, life in the U.S. in 10 years' time. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history, but thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Science fiction 20 years ago, but a biometric reality today. In medical news tonight, a chip the size of a grain of rice could save your life. I've just been chipped myself. Uh, it's not a painless process, but it doesn't last too long, not too difficult, minor surgical procedure. New microchip technology now makes it possible for the emergency room staff to find out about your medical history at the touch of a computer key. At some point, we're all gonna have RFIDs. It might be even in our fingers, where they require it with everything on it. Instead of carrying credit cards or money, we will probably be implanted with chips. And now RFID microchips like this are being injected into humans. I'm sorry, sir, did you just say you, you would get one implanted in your arm? Absolutely, without a doubt. Our driver's license will be on the RFID chip, our credit card number, all our information will be on this one chip. The chip is encased in unbreakable glass and is about the size of a grain of rice. The procedure is done with anesthesia and is relatively pain-free. It felt pretty scary, but at the same time it feel, felt very modern, very 2015. The government has just approved the use of a computer chip that would be implanted under your skin. When complete, everyone will have a unique 12-digit identity number. If hospitals purchase this detection equipment, the system will most likely start to include more and more people in those communities who will want the chips. Wow. Interesting. Everybody could have one of those one day. Does Google now know everything I do and everywhere I go? Because let's face it, Here, we, we like just... you guys, but you're from Google. It may be true that 10 to 20 year olds don't want to wear a watch on their wrist, but you can be sure that they'll be far more interested in wearing an electronic tattoo if only to piss off their parents. Forget mobile phones, your children and grandchildren may well want an implant instead. You know, when we check out 
at the grocery store will be swiping our own arm over the scanner. And that will be something we feel we can't live without. It would be such a disadvantage to not have the implant that it essentially becomes not optional. Let's imagine a little bit what the future might look like if I could take your stem cells and put them on a chip, or your stem cells and put them on a chip. It would be a personalized chip just for you. It turns over, but it doesn't stop. But the RFID reader antenna is here. So when I authenticate, the bike powers up. That's it. Imagine if some of these machines could be made so thin, light, and portable that they could be attached right to the surface of your skin and go wherever you go. There's some very sophisticated device functionality sitting on my skin. Welcome to the future, specifically the checkpoint of the future. It is envisaged that the passenger will be able to flow through the security checkpoint without interruption. This is what IATA, which is the airline industry trade body, is hoping will become commonplace around the world. A sort of one-stop shop for security from the curb to the gate, as they say, with dignity. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement. There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that. Mark my words before your tenure is over. Mark my words, huh? More like the mark of the beast. Even though it is called a tattoo, there is no need to pierce or puncture the skin. Instead, the device sticks on. So what we can do then is we can take this device, laminate it on the skin. It occurs to me I've got them in my dogs. Why wouldn't I have them in small children, too? There are also several products available to keep track of children. Many of them act as emergency cell phones and tracking devices, with some even able uh, to display on a map the places your child has visited. They told you we're giving you a nano tracker chip? Uh, yeah. To think something so small can connect you to everything that matters. Because I'm in love with my kids' kids because my car lost control while driving. Because now I'm looking out for both of us. Because I have diabetes, but it doesn't have me. Because I spend my life in the ER trying to save yours. We are now joined by Brandon Gallups from the Freedom Friday radio show. And Brandon, you are a Christian and a biblical scholar. And I wanted to get your take on all this. We see this emerging technology that's on the rise right now. Do you think we are seeing the beginnings of the mark of the beast? Uh, Darren, yes. As you said, brother, I am a Christian unashamedly. And uh, I, I base my life and my views of the world on a biblical worldview. I compare everything against scripture. And, uh, you know, I'm not one to dogmatically say that absolutely the mark of the beast has arrived on the scene, but with the technologies that we're seeing, the, uh, the RFID people willingly getting implanted uh, and a push even uh, in some places uh, for maybe some forced implants very soon, I, I do think that that is right around the corner, brother. We could very well be on the horizon of that. Well, see, what's kind of uh, scary to me is we're starting to see a trend, and it's a familiar trend, and that is these executives from these, these technical corporate giants, if you will, the, the revolving door, once again, between these high-tech executives and positions in the federal government. For example, Tommy Thompson, he is the former Secretary of Health and Human Services, and he is now on the board with Verichip Corporation. And he is out there actively lobbying for the microchip implant. I'm sorry, sir. Did you just say you, you would get one implanted in your arm? Absolutely. Without a doubt. Okay. Tommy Thompson, former Health and Human Services Secretary. Scott Silverman, Chairman and CEO of Applied Digital. Don't forget to vote in our Squawk Back question. Would you implant or have implanted an RFID chip? Uh, they uh, slide it under your skin of your arm. 
You don't even know it's there? Then there's the former director of DARPA, who is now a Google executive. Her name is Regina Dugan. And I tell you what, she's about as creepy as it gets. She's out there promoting smart tattoos and ingestible biochips that are already approved by the FDA, by the way. And she's telling a very young audience that this technology will give you superpowers. Uh, what do you think, Brandon? Do you think that uh, an RFID chip will give you superpowers? Well, it certainly may at some point give you the uh, power to buy and sell. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think that it will give you superpowers. Absolutely not. And, and you know, Darren, when we compare this to Scripture and we look and see, uh, you know, particularly Revelation 13, uh, talking about that the whole world will, will have this system uh, and that you will have to have it to be able to buy and sell, this system, this RFID system, is the first technology that we have seen that provides that ability. Now, again, I'm not saying dogmatically this is that, but it certainly has the ability to uh, to, to become that very quickly. Not only that, but they're, they're already planning. I know the United States and Europe, they've already got it in the works where you're not going to be able to travel unless you have some kind of biometric ID and what do, you, what do you think about that? I mean, what they're saying, and we're going to show here in a second, we're a CNN reporter. He says that you'll finally be able to travel with dignity. Welcome to the future, specifically the checkpoint of the future. This is what IATA, which is the airline industry trade body, is hoping will become commonplace around the world. A sort of one-stop shop for security from the curb to the gate, as they say, with dignity. It is envisaged that the passenger will be able to flow through the security checkpoint without interruption, unless the advanced technology identifies a potential threat. There is expected to be little or no wait time as a result of the enhanced speed at which screening can occur. So there you have it, basically a system which, if IATA has it right, will mean that passengers go from the curb to the gate in their language with dignity, without having to stop, without having to unpack, without having to strip, without having to be worried about being groped. Now, do you think it's going to be dignified to have an implantable RFID chip? No, absolutely not. It certainly won't be dignified and, and I won't be traveling. But think about this also, Darren, when, when we, again, when we go back to Scripture and it talks about it by their right hand or on their foreheads, you know, obviously John, uh, who saw this vision, lived over 2,000 years ago, and he was using the best language he had to describe what he was being shown. Sure. So, uh, listen, the, the, the forehead, the biometric ID, that, that could be as simple as, uh, as a retina scan. And uh, we're already seeing these technologies being mandated in, of all places, Israel, which I think is very interesting. Well, and they're also, you know, they're subjecting children to this. I I've got a, an article right here from the Associated Press, right, where it's, it's talking about tracking school children through the, the Head Start program. They even have kids as young as preschool where they stitch RFID tracking devices in their jerseys, which are required, that these kids are required to wear these so they could track their every move. Meanwhile, in the UK, RFID chips are used to track children everywhere they go all day long. So picture this, you have Tommy, young Tommy, he's about 11 years old. When he gets out of school, he gets on the bus, they have him wearing an electronic bracelet, right? It kicks off a sensor that's on the bus, notifies his parents through their cell phone. They get a cell phone message, Tommy is safely on the bus. When he gets off the bus, it notifies him that he's gotten off the bus and then even when he enters the house, they are notified. So I think it's going to end up, if these kids are raised like this, it's going to be an easy transition for them when they are finally told, listen, the bracelet comes off. Now you get the RFID chip implant. What are your thoughts on that? I think you are 100% correct, Darren, because just think about this. Everything that we see that we now realize is evil, going back, uh, you know, the Patriot Act, the, all of the NSA spying and everything, listen, that was sold to us as we need this for safety. 
And of course, why not appeal to our emotions about the most precious thing on earth to us, our children? Listen, we can put this in your children and you never have to worry about your child going missing or being abducted. We will always know where they are. We can always find them. When in fact, it may very well be that this is the most evil technology we have ever seen, but it will be sold to us, just like you're saying, in the name of safety. We're already seeing that. Well, technology is definitely a double-edged sword because I could see there's a lot of advantages. Yeah, I would like to Absolutely. know where my children are and, and, and that sort of thing. And if they are ever to get lost, it would be nice to be able to track them. So they're definitely going to sell it that way. Well, I tell you what, if you think the federal government is not going to utilize this technology to track its own citizens, think again. Here's Attorney General Eric Holder talking about a conversation he had with Vice President Joe Biden about mandatory electronic bracelets for gun owners. Vice President Biden and I had um, a meeting with a group of technology people and talked about how um, guns can be made more safe by making them either through fingerprint identification, um, the gun talks to a, a bracelet or something that you might wear, um, how guns can be used only by the person who is uh, lawfully in um, possession of, of the weapon. And here's another very alarming clip from then Senator Joe Biden before he became vice president. And this was during the confirmation hearings for Supreme Court Justice John Roberts. Biden tells Roberts that he will have to rule on implantable microchips during his tenure. And we'll be faced with equally consequential decisions in the 21st century. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement? There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that, mark my words, before your tenure is over. Can brain scans be used to determine whether a person is inclined toward criminality or violent behavior? You will rule on that. So even from a Christian perspective, obviously, we wouldn't want to get the mark because, well, uh, according to the Bible, uh, your eternity depends on whether you take the mark or not. But also, I would imagine it would be an Orwellian nightmare as well. We're, we're talking about a dystopian future, but an Orwellian future where Big Brother and the government monitors every single thing you do. Do you think that that's something that we should be concerned about? No, I definitely do, because you have to think I mean, just common sense would tell us that when this time comes, when we see something mandated where they are trying to mark every person in the whole world, uh, whether that be for tracking or for buying or selling or whatever it is, it's not just going to be Christians, people like myself who are familiar with the word that say, wait a minute, we know what this is. There's going to be people out there who just common sense, uh, who may give no regard to the Bible at all that say, this is crazy. There's no way I'm going to participate in this. So, so yeah, absolutely. I think that we'll see both. And, and you know, the, the scripture is very clear that Christians are going to be submitted to this at some point. We are going to have to make this decision. Well, absolutely right. And uh, I just want to uh, do me a favor. If you talk to your father, who's the host of the, the radio show, and, and tell people where they could listen to you, where they can find the broadcast if they're not in Florida. How do they access the radio show? And I also want to uh, tell people these two books right here, Fantastic reads if you're interested in the book of Revelations and biblical prophecy right here, Final Warning by Carl Gallup's. I definitely uh, recommend these books. How do the people find your radio show on the internet? Thank you, Darren. It's uh, We broadcast live out of 1330 AM in Milton, Florida. Uh, you can find us on the TuneIn Radio app. Just search 1330 W-E-B-Y. Uh, and all of our podcasts are available for free at carlgallops.com. That's carlgallops.com. Just click the podcast link, and you can find all of our material at uh, www.ppsimmons.com. All right. Brandon Gallops, thank you for joining us. I have a feeling that uh, you'll be with us again sometime in the near future. Thanks again. Thank you, Darren. All right, once again, that was Brandon Gallops. He is the son of Carl Gallops, who's a best-selling author and minister. He wrote Magic Man in the Sky, very good book, and also Final Warning. This is a biblical prophecy book. I recommend both of them. That's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return, Lord willing, tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Until then, have a blessed evening. See you back right here tomorrow. Good night.
From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.